We actually had a submission this week from a viewer. Melissa F. from Chicago, Illinois alerted me to BASF's new heat-resistant plastic that debuted on the Alfa Romeo Giulia's 2.0 liter turbocharger system. And there's not actually anything on this. It's prop. According to Honeywell, 70% of light vehicles worldwide will use turbocharged engine technology by 2020. So BASF designed Ultramid Endure, a polyamide with high heat aging resistance up to 220 degrees. And it was specced into two new powertrain applications, an air intake manifold with an integrated charge air cooler and a hot side turbo duct. A hot side turbo duct! <laughs> Both of them debuted on the new two liter GME engine on Alfa Romeo's Giulia. I mean, that's Giulia with a G, so like a hipster mom Giulia. The two liter Alfa Romeo engine has 280 horsepower and can go from zero to 60 miles per hour in 5.1 seconds with a top speed of 149 miles per hour. BASF collaborated with Canadian automotive supplier ABC to develop Julia's hot side turbo duct. ABC Group used the company's ultra mid endure D5G3BM, a 15% glass fiber reinforced blow molding grade because of its high melt strength and heat aging resistance. ABC also worked with the company to optimize the infrared welding parameters for the part, which was crucial to achieve strong welds and ensure long-term durability. For the air intake manifold, BASF worked with Italian automotive design and manufacturing company Magneti Morelli. Fancy name. The materials had to withstand 200 degrees C of continuous use, so Magneti used BASF's D3G7, which is a 35% glass fiber injection molding grade. The manifold has a burst pressure requirement, so the company needed something with a more reliable weld strength and elevated temperatures. Julia can be all yours for less than $38,000. And thank you, Melissa, for actually sending in the story. I mean, as you know, I always enjoy talking about tech that I'll never be able to afford. Keep them coming. Actually, make them more expensive because just say I can't afford like a $40,000 car. Just, it's a harsh reality. Woo! Put it in your pockets. This Monday, the East Japan Railway Company launched the train suite Shikishima, a 10-car train that will only carry, at most, 34 passengers. At first, it seems like a flawed business model. How will the company make money? I mean, Amtrak loses money every year, even though I pay nearly $100 per ticket to be surrounded by six different versions of the girl on the train. A ticket to ride this luxury train starts at $3,000 and can cost up to 10 grand. I mean, ridiculous, right? Well, the company has sold out of tickets through March 2018. And you actually, you can't even buy a ticket. You have to apply for a ticket. It's not like you can just walk up to the ticket counter at the station. The train is a pretty interesting design. Both the engine and caboose are glass-walled cars to offer a unique viewing experience. And designed by Ken Okuyama, an industrial designer with credentials from GM, Porsche, Ferrari, and Maserati. Okuyama's design of the champagne gold-colored train includes an abundance of traditional materials, particularly wood and origami paper, all of it custom made. On its website, the company promises a journey that will bring you the happiness of knowing that there are still new discoveries to be made. Well, as long as you can afford it. If not, just in the dirt with the rest of us. Put it in your pockets. The European Space Agency is 3D printing bricks made out of moon dust using only the heat from the sun. Just take a, just take a minute to drink that one up. Just take a minute to process that. Upload it into your neural link. Just take a minute to flip that through your face founder. I mean, just take a minute to put that in your port pocket. I mean, just take a minute to just fold it up neatly and put it in your pocket. I don't have a pocket in this shirt. Stick that in your penny loafers and walk home with it. So take that fleeting fact and stick it in your fanny pack. The exercise served as a proof of concept as to how future lunar colonists will build settlements on the moon. Using concentrated sunlight, the materials engineers used simulated lunar dirt made from volcanic material and cooked it in a solar furnace. They used a 3D printer table and baked 0.1 millimeter layers of moon dust at 1,000 degrees C using 147 curved mirrors that focused sunlight into a high temperature beam and melted the soil grains together. They produced a 20 by 10 by 3 centimeter brick, 
which is about the same length and width of a standard brick, but about half the height. Well, and they did it all in about five hours. The bricks are now undergoing detailed mechanical testing. They did run into some problems, as a few of the bricks actually warped at the edges, because that part of the brick cools faster than the center. They're hoping to solve that problem by accelerating the printing speed. But let's talk timeline. Forget that massive lunar base. Let's say, let's say we want to start with a simple like 10 by 10 moon shed. Now, with normal bricks, you need 6.3 bricks per square foot. That's about 2,520 normal bricks for our moon shed and about 5,040 moon dust bricks. That would take 25,200 hours of print time or about three years if that 3D printer and solar furnace are like up and running 24 seven. I mean, hopefully they can figure out the roof while they're waiting on bricks, but I mean like, I suppose that the lunar base will be more like a igloo made out of moon bricks, something like that. Maybe they can find a way to make more of like a moon dust concrete and they can run it through a massive printer like that one that was 3D printing homes in Russia in like 24 hours. I don't know, that's just a lot of time waiting on bricks. What are you doing? Building a house. Slowly. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design.